As a philosopher, I sometimes encounter this stereotype that philosophers are always brooding over these deep and existential topics, right? And most of the time, this isn't true. I spend a lot of my day thinking about the nature of happiness or just sort of boring puzzles in belief and justification. But occasionally, the stereotype actually gets things exactly right. And one topic where it does is the subject of death. Philosophers have long thought about, long been obsessed by, the idea of mortality. And this goes all the way back to Socrates, right? Socrates thought of philosophy as training for death. He sometimes says things like, philosophers practice dying, and thus it is less terrible to them than any other men. What could he possibly mean by this? Well, here's a couple of examples. So Socrates actually gives us an argument that we shouldn't fear death, that, that fear of death is irrational. He says, look, death is one of two things. Either it's the longest dreamless sleep that you've ever had, or there's some sort of afterlife, right? Where you get to see everybody that's come before you. Maybe you can ask them questions and hang out with them. And he says, look, if it's deep, dreamless sleep, that's amazing. Who doesn't love sleeping? And if there's an afterlife and we get to hang out with everybody, that's like the best dinner party of all time, right? So no matter what's the case, we shouldn't fear death. Now, this might not immediately bring you comfort if you do fear death, right? But at the very least, Socrates thinks he's shown that the fear of death is irrational, that we should rearrange our attitudes accordingly. Here's a second philosopher, an ancient philosopher who thinks about death, Lucretius, who says, look, if you fear your death because you think I will not exist after I die, right? Well, then imagine all of the time that you did not exist before you were born. None of us walks around thinking, gosh, like I'm so afraid of or I regret the fact that I wasn't born, you know, 10 years before I actually was born. He says, but this is a mirror, right? Non-existence before you were born is the same state as non-existence after you die. So you should have the same attitude toward both. Now, these are both uh, ancient arguments, right, that are a, an attempt to ameliorate our fear of death. Uh, and I want to consider one more. And this one actually comes from a very contemporary philosopher, right? So Bernard Williams says, not only should we not fear death, but actually there's really good reason to hope that life doesn't go on eternally, that we're not immortal, right? And here's how his argument goes. He says, there are at least two kinds of desires that you could have. There are instrumental desires that we sort of have and, and fulfill on an everyday basis. I'm hungry and so I wanna eat something, right? And then there are categorical desires, the kind of desires that you can only achieve or accomplish by putting significant effort toward that thing, right? By spending your life trying to master it, right? So a categorical desire might be something like writing a great novel uh, or even just doing a good job at your career, right? You know, having a nice sort of shape to your career, that sort of thing. Now, Williams thinks, look, inevitably, if we lived forever, we would eventually run out of categorical desires that we would want to fulfill. But no meaningful life can lack any categorical desire. If you just have people walking around with no aspirations, no ambitions, no hopes for the future, that would be a tedious, awful, very boring life, right? So he refers to this idea as the tedium of immortality. And he thinks this is an argument that eternal life would not actually be that great. Now, of course, he's a philosopher and he's offering an argument. There are a lot of philosophers, contemporary philosophers and also ancient philosophers we could draw on uh, to disagree with this idea. You know, clearly religious philosophers, at least those that believe in an afterlife, are going to want to disagree uh, uh, with this idea somehow. But it's an interesting question, right? And it's an interesting puzzle. Uh, and it goes beyond even what Socrates thought to be the main point of philosophy with respect to death, right? So instead of just, you know, alleviating our fear of death, Bernard Williams thinks, no, we should actually use our mortality, our finiteness, our limitations to appreciate the values, the categorical desires that we actually have, right? I think this is an intuitive idea. A lot of us think, you know, we can make the most of our lives if we reflect on the fact that eventually we're going to die, right? And we allow that to refocus our energy, our attention on the things in life that we think matter most. So when it comes to philosophy, sometimes, yeah, we are thinking about uh, deep brooding topics like death. But even when we're thinking about those topics, philosophers often have a way of shedding some light on them uh, that is actually kind of hopeful and optimistic.